Hello everyone, my name is Dan and I'm the owner of Snowcap Mods and I'm here today to introduce to you the Matterhorn 21700 Hybrid Mechanical Mod. This is Snowcap Mods the newest uh, product and it is following after the Denali which was a very very popular product. Um, I have made some improvements to the, the product to uh, make it more ergonomic, comfortable in the hand, um, and incorporate the comments that customers have given me over the life of, of my pre previous products. So let's drop down low, but first let's take a hit. That's the 30 millimeter fatality on top. All right, see you down bottom. All right, everyone, and welcome to the download portion of the video. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take a look around the outside of the Matterhorn. Uh, so we can see that um, many, many, the basic design has been taken from uh, the Avalanche, which um, has been in production for quite some time now. So we can see the characteristic uh, mountain cutouts um, that also serve to function to hold the battery into place. Uh, we have a door on the back, uh, mountains on the other side. Um, on the front we have the locking button and as you can see there's two flat spots uh, top and bottom uh, to help you more easily twist to lock this button. So it's locked, it will not fire now and we can unlock it. Then down here, uh, we can see we have the Snowcap Mods logo. Um, I kept the, <clears throat> the branding um, as minimal as possible on this mod just because there's not a lot of real estate and I think it just looks better like this. Um, then, you know, we have the bottom. Uh, we can see the shape of the Matterhorn. So we have this very, very nice rounded back and we also have very, very rounded corners in the front. Um, so that really makes this mod super, super comfortable, um, really in any position. So right or, or left or thumb firing in both hands. Okay. So this mod is, is super friendly for, for all, uh, here we have, we see the top. Um, this is the, where the top plate, where the atomizer will sit, um, we can see from the top that this is about 32 uh, millimeters wide. Um, I did that so that it would accommodate a 30 millimeter atomizer without any overhang. Uh, or also, sometimes you can get a gap between this rolled edge and the atomizer. So as we can see here, the Asgard 30 uh, fits on there perfectly fires works great so let's just take a quick look at the comparison between this and the not the Denali uh, we can see that it is about the same height um, and a little bit wider obviously top and bottom uh, because we want to accommodate a 30 millimeter atomizer with this um, however, the Denali is really extraordinarily small. Um, it's not much bigger than a 21700 battery. Uh, and the Matterhorn, um, for being a 30 millimeter capable mod, uh, it's still very, very small and it's still very, very short. Okay. Uh, so if you want to look at the height, uh, take my janky ruler here. And we can see that this is about 80 millimeters tall. Okay. Uh, in the front here, this is, if I remember correctly, this is from here to here is 25 millimeters. Okay, so why don't we break this thing down? So I'm going to take this atomizer off. Um, and actually, let's just talk about something very quickly. Uh, with my most recent mods, I really try to avoid having to use any kind of tools to break it down. 
Um, and we're gonna see more about this hybrid connection later. But when there's no atomizer on, I just want to um, you be upfront and honest. This uh, hybrid connector inside the copper piece you see here uh, is going to move around a little bit when there is no atomizer in it. And you might even hear a little bit of a rattle, okay? Uh, so I know not everybody likes that, but I felt that um, that the way that this is designed uh, has added benefits. And uh, just to be clear, you know, when you screw the atomizer in, it snugs the copper up against the plastic and we have no more rattling. All right, so let's begin to disassemble this, this mod. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the battery. Okay, and we can see that we have a battery carriage just like the Avalanche. Um, there is a stopper here to prevent the battery from sliding out when you're holding it. However, it will come out from the top. Uh, you can also clip the battery on like this. Okay, so here is the door. And we can see uh, with this mod, in many, many parts, the thickest part of this mod is five millimeters of uh, printed nylon. So this mod is very, very sturdy. Um, yeah, so five millimeters of plastic in, in the, at the thickest parts, okay? So in here we can see the, the contacts. Um, we can see here indentations for the battery um, so that the battery is held in place. Um, and as we can see, we can put the battery in like this uh, I guess you could theoretically run it open like this, but it's not very comfortable. Uh, this mod was not intended really to be run uh, with an open battery. Um, and we can see here, we can put our fingers here and remove the battery like this. Okay. Um, so you're going to see several similarities from the Avalanche because that mod just was so well designed and worked so well that I wanted to uh, bring some of the elements into this mod. Uh, so. Uh, we can see what I'm calling the contact gate. So this comes out, all right. And uh, you don't need to use tweezers, but I'm gonna use some here just to make this video run more smoothly, okay? And then we have the bottom contact. Uh, so this is one that I've been using for a few weeks now, so excuse me if it's just a little bit beat up. Um, but we have the, the contact here, okay? Uh, and as we can see, I wanted to um, improve how the bottom contact touches the bottom of the battery, okay? Um, so this here is creates more tension and does not require as much adjustment um, as the contact did in the Denali. Um, just so you know, if you have an atomizer that has maybe a very, very short 510 connection, um, you may have to Stick your finger back here and, and pull it up a little bit. Um, so if you're not making a connection, that's an adjustment that can be made. Uh, let's also take a look here. Um, we have the this bend here, these two bends, one and two, uh, that are there to clear the locking mechanism inside. So the locking mechanism inside of the mod sits in this area, okay? Um, all right, so we're going to come back to this in a moment. Put this here. All right, so we can see the battery has already, uh, I'm sorry, the, bot the button has already come out, but the button sits in here like this. Um, so let's just talk more about this button. Uh, so the first generation of the Denali had trouble with a spinning lock button. Uh, and I actually managed to fix that in later generations, and I have um, brought that improvement into the Matterhorn here. So we can see how the button will sit inside of the mod, and it will press, okay? So, uh, so what I'd like to talk about very quickly is um, mech mod users are often, you know, they're very, very uh, particular, or they can be particular about the feel of the button. Um, and, you know, as a modder, it's an opinion that you have to deal with. Some people like their button very, very stiff. Some people like it light. Some people like a long throw. Some people like a short throw. Um, so I am going to set the mod up the way that I see fit. 
But when you receive it, if you don't like the way the button feels, uh, you can make whatever adjustment you need to make the button function how you want. So let's just take a very quick look at what bends to manipulate, okay? So if you want the throw to be, oh, excuse me, if you want the throw to be stiffer, for example, meaning that you want to, you want the button to feel like you have to press it harder, uh, you would manipulate this bend right here, okay? So we would, if you want it to be harder, you would bend it back a little bit, and if you want it to be softer, you would bend it forward a little bit. Um, similarly, if you wanted to adjust the throw distance or the travel, that would be this bend right here, and we can see that it's marked here and here, and it's bent across. So if you want the bend, uh, the travel to be shorter, we would want to um, bend it in this direction, okay? And if we wanted it to be longer, we would bend it in back in that direction. Uh, if you do choose to manipulate these bends, uh, be very careful and just know that like something that is not really visible to the naked eye, a change in the bends that is not visible to the naked eye, can make a pretty big difference to how the how the button feels. Okay, so that's the inner the bottom contact. All right, so let's put this up here. All right, guys. So I'm going to take out the top contact now. Um, so let's do that. Uh, so what you need is some kind of a pointed object, really any kind of a pointed object. And what you want to do is push this part, this little button, you want to push it sort of down and out, okay? So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to push this down, down and out. And we can see that the upper contact plug has come out, okay? So that fits uh, right in this location here behind this contact, okay? And then we have the top contact, all right? So again, I've been using this, this is mine, it's, so it's a little bit um, oxidized, but we can see this here, a big piece of, of copper. Uh, this is where the contact or the, the two contacts meet to begin um, firing. Uh, we can see that these two parts meet here and here, okay? So we have uh, some very large surface area uh, making contact. Okay. All right. So here we have all of the parts uh, laid out for the Matterhorn. Okay. We can see that there are one, two, three, four, five printed parts and two copper parts. So, you know, very, very simple. Uh, and please notice that I just took this entire thing apart with really only one tool, a pointed object, which, you know, you could maybe use your keys or something else if you ever need to take this apart. Um, so let's start putting it back together. Now, this is something that I'm really proud of, uh, especially compared to the Denali. Uh, this uh, contact slides right into here, okay? And we can see that it is sitting, uh, it is sitting in the proper location. Um, so then we have the upper contact plug. So let's put that in here. And we can hear that there's a nice click and we can see that this is lodged in place now, okay? And we can see that the button has gone into the correct position. Um, so there, so there is so, something worth speaking about here. Um, so you might be wondering, how is this contact prevented from making top contact with the top of the, the top of the battery, okay? Or the, I guess the bottom of the battery in this case. So if we look in close here, these two little ridges on each side, okay, here, here, and here, prevent the battery from touching this top contact. So if we take a look, right, we can see that there is a small gap of about one millimeter um, that forms right here uh, that prevents the the battery from touching the con top contact. So that's a safety feature to prevent any short shorts or something like that. Okay. Uh, then inside we can see the locking me mechanism. Um, you know, it look it, to, to the untrained eye, it might look the same as all of the other mods that I have made in the past, but this lock has been revised and revised and revised to function better 
So I think this lock is probably on its maybe eighth revision. Um, you know, just tiny little revisions along the way, okay? Uh, so we'll take this button here and take a look again. We see the button, that's where the locking mechanism is. And uh, I added this a while ago on some of my other mods, but you can see that there are two flat spots that help us to grab the lock button to twist and lock it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the button back in. All right, then I'm going to take my contact and I'm gonna make sure that I clear the, the, the top contact there and then I'm gonna drop it in. And then I'm going to take my contact gate. Now, uh, the left side, the left side of the contact gate must be inserted first, because if we compare, one side is, is taller than the other. Uh, so we need to put this into the left side first, okay? And then we can see that the added height of these holes on the other side allows this to slide in. And then we're going to just take it and push this down, okay? And once we've done that, we are just going to make sure that the contact is seated correctly by pushing it down. Uh, we are going to make sure that there is proper contact happening, which we have in this case. Um, and then we are going to insert the battery. Now I want to talk to everybody about how to insert the battery um, because over the years I have noticed that with this design, this clip and design, people like to do certain, you know, weird things. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to put, put it in like this and you want the battery to clear both of these clips, all four clips, at the same exact time. So we just push it in like that, okay? We, what we do not want to do is we do not want to try to push one side in and then the other, okay? Um, it puts unnecessary stress on the top of the and bottom of the mod, and in extreme circumstances, it may cause it to break. So we just want to make sure that we are putting uh, the battery in like that. And we can take our door and we can clip it on like this, okay? Now, I would like everybody to see, um, it might be hard to tell on camera. Okay, we can see it here. Um, we have two little locking clips on the top of this, uh, and that is uh, there to help reduce um, rattling of the door, and they correspond to these holes right here, okay? So I'm gonna clip these in like this, and then we will uh, insert a mod. So with copper contacts, it's always good to make sure that we uh, put the atomizer on and rotate counterclockwise before we start uh, rotating clockwise. Okay. And we have one assembled, ready to fire Avalanche Matterhorn. I'm sorry, at Matterhorn 21700. Okay. So, uh, I am really, really proud of this mod. Um, it is just, just like the Avalanche was uh, and is, it is just super, super comfortable to hold. Um, the other thing that is really, really nice about this is because the plastic is, or the nylon is so thick um, on this, uh, it has very, very nice weight to it. Um, so some people say, you know, the Denali, it, it felt like nothing. Um, and one of the problems with a very, very light mod is that uh, it can be difficult to comfortably run an RTA. Uh, so that was one of the things, the goals that I had with this mod is I really wanted this to be comfortable with both RDAs and RTAs. So um, I have the Fatality 30 millimeter on here. Uh, it is not a light RTA. And um, it feels great on here. Very, very comfortable. Looks good, feels good, vapes great, okay? So um, keep an eye out. And if you would like to make a purchase, please go to snowcapmods.com and you can take a look. All right, thank you.